Wilafreda, welcome, cousin. What brings you here? Frida, darling, I've come to spice up your baking game. Heard you're having some trouble with Swiss meringue buttercream. Yes, my chocolate Swiss meringue buttercream turned out lumpy with chocolate bits everywhere. I think I hurried it too fast. Lumpy? Sounds like you did, but fear not, cousin. I've got some tricks, and one of them is how you add the chocolate in the last step. And there are a few others along the way, too. All right, but first, let's focus on separating the eggs properly. How do you suggest we do it? Ah, the age-old debate. I say, let's crack the egg and use the shell to separate it. It's quick and efficient, and you don't get your fingers dirty. But I prefer using my hands. It's more precise and less chance of shell fragments. And I think they separate so much easier when they're fresh out of the fridge. Either way you use, you can't get any yolk mixed in. Right, or it won't whisk to stiff peaks. And everything has to be super duper clean. No yolk, fat, or speck of grime can get in at all. And those shells are great for the garden, too. To your whites, add two cups of sugar, a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cream of tartar. The cream of tartar will stabilize the egg whites. You know, there's so many of them. This leaves us with eight egg yolks. Hey, we can use these egg yolks and make a giant cream brulee next. Oh yeah, our giant cream brulee went over really well at FairyCon last year. Watch that video next. Now whisk these constantly over boiling water. This is called a double boiler, or in other parts of the world, a bin marie. We're heating up the whites very gently so we don't make scrambled eggs and careful not to let the water touch the bottom of the pan. Heat these to 160 degrees. We use a touchless thermometer. It'll pasteurize the eggs too. It starts out really thick, kind of like snot, but it loosens up as it heats up. The sugar dissolves too, and it starts getting nice and frothy. There, it's ready. Take it off the heat and whisk to stiff peaks. This takes 10 to 15 minutes and cools down a lot, but usually not cool enough to add the butter. They have to be the same temperature when you add the butter in. It's starting to show some ripples behind the whisk, but nope, too wimpy, not ready. We're almost there. It's still a little limpy on the end there, see? Woohoo! I see a mountain peak in the bowl. And there you go. See how stiff? It's a mountain peak. Now here's the key to every Swiss meringue buttercream. Cool it down to the same temperature as your butter. I think I said that earlier too. You can put it in the fridge, but we like to sit it in a bowl of ice water. We use meltless ice cubes too. You can refreeze them and use them to cool down other things like your drinks without watering them down. And then we check them each one last time just to make sure. 65 degrees is our magic number. Cutting up the butter ahead of time lets the core temperature come to room temperature too. Now we just put in a chunk at a time. A chunk is about two tablespoons. You can't rush this part. You have to let the chunk fully mix in before throwing in the next chunk. If you throw it all in too fast, it could break the buttercream and you'd get an awful looking mess that looks clumpy and greasy. We made a separate video on how to fix that. About halfway through, it might start looking something like soft serve ice cream. Don't worry, it'll all come together. By the time you get to your last stick of butter, it'll come together rather quickly. Add that last chunk, it comes together like magic. Isn't that just the coolest thing? Now it's time for the melted and cool chocolate. It will be too solid if you cooled it to room temperature, so here's the trick. 
Let it get to under 75, 80 degrees at the very hottest, and add in just about a third. Oh, whisk this for quite a while to get it fully mixed in. Then you can add in the rest a little at a time. Oh, it's like you're letting the chocolate cool while whisking and any solid bits will dissolve. Yep. And if you added it in too fast and melt the butter, just put the whole bowl and whisk in the fridge or ice bath for like 10 minutes to cool it down. But that might make your metal bowl so cold that the chocolate solidifies onto it. I think that happened to mine. Just leave it stuck to the bowl. Don't try to scrape it off or you'll get solid chunks in your smooth frosting. Cool, I love learning something new. And time for the grand finale. I love piping. We're using a Wilton 1M. Leave a comment. We love to see your comments. It makes our day.